Out on the colorful rolling plains of Murray, Pontotoc, and Johnston counties, out where nature has been kind to the stock raiser, lies a 10,000 acre paradise in the heart of the blue stem grass country. Studded with many score of the sturdy, thrifty breed of cattle known as the herder. Turner Herford Ranch, where champion sire champion. Nestled back off the main thoroughfare which spans this Herford headquarters, has been built an impressive and lasting series of buildings dedicated to the development and furtherment of the Herford. The Roy J. Turner Ranch Home, modern and complete in every detail. This is the main show cattle barn. Residents of prize winners and other outstanding individuals sired on the Turner Ranch. The ranch office, where in a fireproof room are kept complete and detailed records of each animal. The grain elevator with a capacity for 21,000 bushels of grain and the combination calf and sales barn, where calves showing outstanding possibilities are groomed, where a portion of the top young cattle of the herd are sold yearly at public auction to other breeders. This group of cows and calves that range is representative of the quality of herd being developed on the ranch. Although the Hereford is famous for his ability to thrive in any type of country or climate, nature has outdone herself in supplying a bountiful growth of blue stem grass, fed by and nourished on the limestone soil which abounds in Murray, Pontotoc, and Johnston County, on a plateau off the north flank of the Arbuckle. and calves and rolling plains. This group of cows is located in a farther pasture where the herdsman and ranch owner will anxiously await the coming of the next calf. Each of these animals receives regular individual attention and inspection. This care, together with the natural vigor and healthiness of the herd, makes for a sturdy and progressive herd. Another typical ranch scene. Here's a husky young fellow who hasn't had much time to get acquainted. In fact, he'd never been touched by human hands before this picture was made. Chances are his mama will be mighty proud of him someday soon when he wins those championship ribbons in the prize ring. The gentleness of the Herford breed is reflected even in the young. Just a few seconds of handling and petting assures this young rascal that everything's all right. But mama says don't be too sure, sonny. Good grass and fresh water are the two most important essentials for Herford cattle. Here all stock is watered from wells of pure fresh water, wells ranging as much as 300 feet in depth. Calves not selected for show purposes and left in pastures are not neglected. Where calves are left with their mothers, the youngsters are given access to creek feeders with openings large enough only to admit the smaller animals. In many cases, the cows not selected as showing possibilities have developed into prize cattle through this special care. This is a typical representative group of young females who will be turned into the pasture to replenish and improve the herd. Individuals like this lady will be watched expectantly for future champions.
from the pasture, this young, fine group of sturdy calves are being turned into stalls for feeding. These are among the calves from the range which have shown promise of becoming outstanding show animals. Those which show promise are moved from time to time out of the pasture into lots adjacent to this calf barn where they are taken in and receive special care and attention in preparation for showing. Regularly, four times a year, each animal on the ranch receives a blood test and other tests including calf vaccination for protection against contagious disease. Just as the modern physician recommends vaccination of today's children, they are made regularly so that a federally accredited herd is maintained. For the Bangs disease test, the animals are herded to a specific pen where they quietly and without coaxing enter the lineup for their test. supervised the veterinary work and health tests for this herd since the time it was established. Close to the center of the pastures where the Hereford herd ranges, paddocks are maintained for the herd sires, and shelters protect the animal from the sun, and provide overhanging burlap sacks to flap over his body and keep away the flies. All sires shown in these scenes have championship records from outstanding shows. This is H.T. Tone, undefeated champion for 1938 and 1939 season. Champion of 10 shows, including the International Livestock Exposition at Chicago and at the World's Fair Show on Treasure Island, San Francisco. Notice the mellowness and handling qualities possessed by this great champion. Now meet Hasford Rupert 81st an international champion and sire of an international champion. He was the champion bull of the International Livestock Show at Chicago in 1936. He has sired many an outstanding individual, including his son, T. Royal Rupert, 15th, undefeated champion when a yearling in 1940. 47 of this great animal's sons and daughters returned more than $61,000 sold during a period of 12 months. Note the head, depth of body, compactness of this great individual. Here is nine-year-old Hasper Tone 76, champion bull and sire of H.T. Tone, the first herd bull shown. Hasper Tone 76 was champion of the National Western Livestock Show at Denver in 1936. His record places him among the top-ranking sires of America, a grand old champion. T. Vicaldo Tone second, one of the junior herd sires, won his class at the American Royal the International Livestock Exposition, and at the International Exposition in San Francisco. He was reserve champion at the National Hereford Show at Dallas. Note the width and depth and smoothness of the rear quarter. As the calves grow older, they are moved to lots near the show cattle barn from their home in the calf barn and prepared for the show circuit. They are carefully groomed and diligently trained for the arena. Here are typical lot scenes adjacent to the show cattle barn. Well, look at these spick and span individuals. How on earth did they ever become so clean? Oh, so that's it. What is this, Saturday night on a Hereford ranch? No, indeed. These handsome animals are being washed in preparation for the arena. They are to be removed temporarily from the farm to be shipped to a nearby show. Just look at that wave. A perfect picture of a perfect Hereford. Clean, brushed, and polished, the animals are now loaded into a trailer truck to be taken to the railroad and shipped to the show ring. All 
National Prize winners, all boasting the blood of champions in their veins. The main Frisco Railroad line bisects the Turner Ranch so that these animals actually do not leave their homes until they are safely aboard the cars. From here, Turner Herefords have been shipped to practically all the 48 states and even to foreign countries. And so, away they go, away to the show on rails of steel, to return with more noteworthy records of accomplishment. In memory of Hasford Rupert 25th, Cav February 19, 1923 at Hasford Place. Died May 25, 1938 at this ranch. An American Herford Association Register of Merit Sire. These are ribbons of award won by the animals on the Roy J. Turner Herford Ranch. championship ribbon. Each animal must have won a blue ribbon to compete for championship. Only first prize and championship Turner Herford winnings for two years are represented here. These trophies represent Turner Herford winnings at the World Fair in San Francisco, at the International Livestock Exposition in Chicago, at the American Royal in Kansas City, the National Herford Show at Dallas, and other leading shows throughout the nation. a separate outstanding award at the nation's greatest Herford show. Honor to the champion. Attention is turned for the moment from animals to activities. Activities with machinery. Here on the Turner Ranch, the hay harvest is one of the important yearly events. 30,000 bales of hay a year are mowed from the pastures. The surplus grass, unused and unneeded by the stock it rains. This equipment is capable of turning out 100 bales of hay per hour. A 10-hour day usually produces 1,000 bales of hay be moved and stored in the hay barns located at convenient points on the ranch. busy day. The Oklahoma sun sends its lazy, fiery fingers across the evening solitude. And that means hurry up, cowboy. Supper's waiting. So in from the fields they come, and it's rest time until sunup tomorrow. Yes, all work with no pay would not keep any ranch in operation. So it's Get Ready Paymaster, it's Saturday night, and we're ready for those green bags. Hurry up there, Cookie, or there might not be any left for you. Up at the ranch house, we catch the Turner family enjoying a quiet, peaceful evening in the spacious and colorful living room. 
Mr. and Mrs. Roy Turner, and their two children, Betty and Bill. The next day, of course, is Sunday, and here's the family out for a breath of air. Freckles, the spaniel, is a favorite family pet, especially Betty's favorite. But Bill thinks that kitten named Susie so soft isn't a bit bad. Friends always find a cheerful and friendly welcome awaiting them at the Turner Ranch. With its many conveniences, with the advancement of modern transportation, the ranch is reached easily and quickly from the nearby towns of Ada, Sulphur, and Tishomingo. And it's only 100 miles from Oklahoma City, capital city of the Sooner State. These friends have been invited to enjoy a gallop for the Turners, and eagerly they accept. That's the Turner Ranch manager, Jim McClellan, and his wife, Mrs. McClellan, riding with the Turners and their children. Jim is more than proud of that spirited Palomino. Young Bill thinks that there's a lot to be said in favor of that long-legged youngster. Now, what's this? More visitors? Yes, indeed. But it's another day now. It's Club Day on the Turner Ranch, and that means the annual event at which the future farmers of America and the 4-H boys display their cattle judging ability. And here they are, 850 eager, ambitious young men, waiting the opportunity to get down to the business of selecting the best animals from those put on display for the purpose. Judging begins at 9.30 a.m., and all contestants must be registered by that time. Contestants must belong to a team of five boys. doesn't take the boys long to find the well at the herdsman's house, and so it's a cool drink all around before the judging begins. These two typical judges take a careful look at this fine-blooded animal. That's Mr. R.J. Kinzer in the white shirt, secretary of the American Herford Cattle Breeders Association, and Dean W.L. Blizzard, dean of agriculture at the Oklahoma A&M College, Stillwater. Mr. Kinzer is the official contest judge. And look who else is here. It's Grandpa Orr, 90 years young, who traveled 100 miles to be on hand for the big show. Besides the 850 boys partaking in the judging at this annual Turner Ranch event, their instructors and vocational teachers are also present to make up the total of the 1,200 guests. The mighty fine bunch of cattle these boys are inspecting, the mighty fine bunch of boys, America's future citizens. There's no direct competition between the FFA and 4-H boys as clubs. Members of one club are not competing against members of the other. Each organization conducts its own contest and separate prizes are provided for each distinct group. You can tell by the expressions of these faces that the boys are up against no easy proposition. Divided into five squads, each squad is allotted 12 minutes to each pen. Then they must move on to the next pen after turning in cards on a pen just judged. From 10 to 12 classes are judged, from calf classes to cows brought in directly from the pasture. Finally, the cards are all in, and here are the number one bull and the number one female of the contest. These two animals used in this contest are a two-year-old champion cow and her son, a winner of one of the classes.
now the judging is over, and 850 hungry boys are on the march. Pecan Grove on the ranch, the Natural Picnic Park, the club boys, almost 1,200 in all, and visitors assemble for a meal fit for a king. Here, 800 pounds of barbecued beef has been prepared, 3,600 buns, the same number of cookies, 150 pounds of potato chips, 3,000 bottles of ice-cold soda pop, and all the pickles, onions, and trimmings. And still they come, eager to ease that hunger that only a boy can feel. down there, Sonny. That's your second helping, but there's more where it came from. There's Betty Turner, out to prove that she prefers her barbecued beef, despite Wimpy and his hamburger. Mrs. Turner and the dark glasses wouldn't miss one of these annual affairs for anything. After all, the men can't have all the fun. Roy Turner seems to have something on his mind. Maybe it's the speech he's about to make to the assembled crowd. Mr. Turner welcomes the club boys and the club day guests to the Turner Ranch, congratulates the boys for their fine efforts, and introduces the guest of honor. Mr. Thomas E. Wilson, chairman of the board of the Wilson Packing Company, addresses the club members and guests. And a personal message is extended by Mr. Wilson's son, Edward F. Wilson, president of the Wilson Company. Mr. Turner presents the trophies to the winning 4-H club team. On the extreme left is the county agent who brought this team to the contest. And another trophy is accepted for the team by the vocational teacher of the top-ranking Future Farmers of America group. Individual trophies are provided by Mr. Turner for each club. Cash prizes are offered to winning teams and to several teams and individuals turning in the most commendable score. During another season of the year, usually in January, the Turner Ranch conducts its annual sale. A selected group of the younger top animals are offered at public auction to other breeders. were taken during the 1941 sale on January 6th. Under canvas, food is prepared and served to all the 1,500 guests attending the sale. Yes, the weather is bad, but the food is good and hot. No rain or cold can interrupt an event such as this. This portable bleacher is located inside the cattle sales barn. These movable seats are easily set up and taken down, constructed especially for sales events. 
So it's 3,000 Eyes Front. The sale is about to begin. Here is Colonel Lark Thompson, auctioneer for the sale, who calls upon the ranch owner, Roy J. Turner. Mr. Turner welcomes the 1,500 visitors and expresses his appreciation to the prospective buyers for braving the rain and ice to come from coast to coast to attend this sale. A brief word from ex-governor Sam R. McKelvey of Nebraska, a nationally known Hereford breeder, and the sale is on. This is a daughter of H.T. Tone, Tonette T. Second, and here is Art Thompson to get the best bid for her. $1,800 all done. 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 Tonette T. Second, sold for $2,100 to the S.R. Ranch of San Antonio, owned by Tom B. Slick, Jr. Here is a fine example of the Turner Ranch produce, Ruperta T. 45th. She sold for $1,150 to Mr. McFadden of Memphis, Tennessee. T. Royal Rupert 40th. This seven-month-old bull is a full brother of T. Royal Rupert 15th, undefeated 1940 champion. This brought $3,200 from James M. Brooke of Brady, Texas. At auction is T. Royal Rupert 30th, a promising seven-month-old calf who will help promote the Herbert herd owned by Warren Balkley of Plano, Illinois. Mr. Balkley paid $3,050 for this handsome son of Hasford Rupert 81st. Another magnificent animal on the block today is Tone T. 44th, a son of Hasford Tone 76. This yearling bull brought $2,500 and was purchased by Claude Hurd of Beeville, Texas. Another son of Hasford Tone 76. This is Tone T. 53rd. He was bought for $1,250 by Mr. M. N. Scott of Dryden, Texas to turn on the range west of the Pecos with commercial cows. Top animal, T. Royal Rupert 15, 19-month-old son of Hasford Rupert 81st, the undefeated champion bull for 1940 in eight shows, including the American Royal at Kansas City, the International Livestock Exposition at Chicago, and the National Hereford Show at Dallas. This was the first time in the breed's history that a yearling bull has been an undefeated champion. T. Royal Rupert 15 sold for $10,100 to High Point Farms of Romeo, Michigan, owned by Mr. Edward F. Fisher, president of the Fisher Body Company. This 1941 sale of 49 head brought a mean average of $1,063 per head. Although this was a special offering of a portion of the ranch's top young cattle, the ranch regularly sells produce at moderate prices to breeding establishments and ranchers. When this bull sold for $10,100, he set a new top for the sale price of a Hereford in over 20 years. Left to right are Bob Rothney, herdsman of the High Point Farms, which bought the animal, Colonel Art Thompson, the auctioneer, Alan Rush, manager of High Point Farms, R.J. Turner, owner of the Turner Ranch, and Mr. R.J. Kinzer, Secretary of the American Hereford Association. This annual sale of the livestock completes the year's business at the Turner Ranch. And so our brief visit completed, we take our leave of the Roy J. Turner Hereford Ranch from the ranch's own airplane landing field. Yearly, many visitors find a welcome here, and an open invitation is extended to everyone to visit and inspect at first hand this excellent herd of the famous cattle known as Herford. The Roy J. Turner Ranch address is Sulphur, Oklahoma, the home of Platt National Park in the heart of the blue-stemmed grass country, where champion, sire, champion.